Dad came home in the middle of the night a few months later and roused us all from bed. Time to pull up stakes and leave this crap hole behind, he hollered. We had 15 minutes to gather whatever we needed and pile into the car. Is everything okay, Dad? I asked. Is someone after us? Don't you worry, Dad said. You leave that to me. Don't I always take care of you? Of course you do, I said. That's my girl, Dad said with a hug, then barked orders at us all to speed things up. He took the essentials, a big black cast iron skillet and the Dutch oven, some army surplus tin plates, a few knives, his pistol and mom's archery set, and packed them into the trunk of the blue goose. He said we shouldn't take much else, just what we needed to survive. Mom hurried out, of the, out to the yard and started digging holes by the light of the moon, looking for our jar of cash. She had forgotten where she'd buried it. An hour passed before we finally tied mom's paintings on the top of the car, shoved whatever we could fit into the trunk, and piled the overflow on the back seat and the car floor. Dad steered the blue goose through the dark, driving slowly so as not to alert anyone in the trailer park that we were, as Dad liked to put it, doing the skedaddle. He was grumbling that he couldn't understand why the hell it took so long to grab what we needed and haul our asses into the car. Dad, I said, I forgot Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell can make it on her own, Dad said. She's like my brave little girl. You are brave and ready for adventure, right? I guess, I said. I hoped whoever found Tinkerbell would love her despite her melted face. For comfort, I tried to, quid I tried to cradle Quicks out our gray and white cat who was missing an ear, but he growled and scratched my face. Quiet, Quicksoat, I said. Cats don't like to travel, Mom explained. Anyone who didn't like to travel wasn't invited on our adventure, Dad said. He stopped the car, grabbed Quicksoat by the scruff of the neck, and tossed him out the window. Quicksoat landed with a screeching meow and a thud. Dad accelerated up the road, and I burst into tears. Don't be so sentimental, Mom said. She told me we could always get another cat, and now Quicksoat was going to be a wild cat, which was much more fun than being a house cat. Brian, afraid that Dad might toss Juju out the window as well, held the dog tight. To distract us kids, Mom got us singing songs like, Don't fence me in, and this land is your land. And Dad led us in rousing renditions of Old Man River and his favorite song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. After a while, I forgot about Quicksoat and Tinkerbell and the friends I'd left behind in the trailer park. Dad started telling us all about the exciting things we were going to do and how we were going to get rich once we reached the new place where we were going to live. Where are we going, Dad? I asked. Wherever we end up, he said. Later that night, Dad stopped the car out in the middle of the desert, and we slept under the stars. We had no pillows, but Dad said that was part of his plan. He was teaching us to have good posture. The Indians didn't use pillows either, he explained, and look how straight they stood. We did have our scratchy army surplus blankets, so we spread them out and lay there, looking up at the field of stars. I told Lori how lucky we were to be sleeping out under the sky like Indians. We could live like this forever, I said. I think we're going to, she said. Hi, I'm Jeanette Wall, daughter of Rex Wall and Rosemary Wall. This is the story of my life. My mom's an artist and a teacher, and my dad's an entrepreneur. He's also an alcoholic. I always thought my mom was weak for giving my dad money that we didn't have for his addictions. So when she went to Charleston to renew her teaching license, I took it upon myself to manage the finances. It was harder to say no than I thought. I need some money. For what? Beer and cigarettes. Sort of a tight budget here, Dad. I need much, just, just five dollars. Twenty dollars? Why twenty? God damn it, why do I have to explain myself to my children? I had to borrow my friend's car, and I had to pay for gas so he could drive me to Gary for a business meeting. I need money to make money. I've got bills piling up. I've got kids to feed. Don't you worry about food and bills. That's for me to worry about, okay? Lori and I had saved up a lot of money, at least for us, so that she could go to New York. We kept it in our piggy bank that we named Oz. She had to get out, and as soon as I finished junior year, I would follow her. We had been saving for almost nine months. One evening, I checked on Oz, and he was smashed and all his contents were gone. Lori waited up to confront Dad, but he didn't come home for three days. Master, you stole our money! What the goddamn hell are you talking about? Watch your language. Ugh! Someone sure as hell gutted old Oz, didn't they? Jeanette, do you know what happened? You took our money. That's what happened. Well, don't that be it all. I come home and I, from freaking slaying dragons, and this is what I come home to. I just want a little respect. 
maybe for all my toil, the sacrifices I've made, and this is what I get. Why do I even bother? I didn't take your goddamn New York money, but if you're so obsessed with living in that cesspool, I'll even finance it for you. Suit yourself. Why are you doing this to us, Dad? Why? I'll never get out of here. I'll never get out of here. Because I, because I knew that if Lori could never get out of Welch, neither would I.